Hello and welcome to another segment of Interviews That Matter. I'm your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by this guest will help our community. Today our guest is Congressman Peter King. Congressman King has been in Congress for 20 years and he's a chairman of Homeland Security Committee. Congressman King is running for re-election in November 6 for his 11th term. Let's meet Congressman King. Thank you so much for well, coming, sir. Thank you. Very um, appreciate your time. Very welcome. Sir, uh, you have been in Congress for almost 10 years. And before that, you have been uh, as a Nassau County Controller for three terms. Um, what motivated you to move from Nassau County Controller to, obviously it's a promotion. Uh, several things. One, I uh, was County Controller for, oh, I guess, 11 and a half years from 1981 mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. 1992. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoyed the job, it was exciting, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. international issues and national issues mm -hmm. really have more of an attraction for me. So when the opportunity mm -hmm. came in 1992 to run for Congress, it was mm -hmm. a close race, it was a tight race, mm -hmm. but I ran in 1992 and I won. I've been there now for the 10 terms in 20 years. Right. And uh, I, terms. again, there's just so many issues to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I never knew when I went there, of course, that 9-11 would happen, mm -hmm. but the fact that I was there on September 11th put me in a position to really particularly help Long Island, help New York, mm -hmm. be involved in Homeland mm -hmm. Security. And again, uh, local government is great, but after mm -hmm. three years as councilman, 11 years as controller, I thought I got the experience at the local level to take to the national and international level. Mm -hmm. So who was your mentor, you know, political mentor, rather? Uh, there's been quite a few. Uh, Al D'Amato was uh, oh, very okay. helpful along the way. Okay. Uh, I could give any number of people who are close friends over the years, people like Dennis Dillon, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Tom Galata, Tom Galata, uh, Joe okay. Mandelo, very many, good friend, any very number good of people, uh, Joe Maggiata, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and there's been you know, uh, mm -hmm. Democrats I worked with, like Larry Elovich, who was a Democratic leader mm -hmm. in Long Beach, mm -hmm. was very mm -hmm. helpful to me all over the years. He just passed away. He did, yeah, great guy. Right, great guy, guy yeah. Guy. Just gave the eulogy, you know, one of the eulogies mm -hmm. at his funeral. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's any number of people. I, I'm a proud Republican, but I also believe that mm -hmm. we should tr try to find ways to have mm -hmm. both parties work together when we can. Mm -hmm. and if we do disagree, mm -hmm. not to be demonizing or attacking the other mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this question. You were a controller, Nassau County controller for like almost, uh, and George Maragos, controller Maragos, yes. was here on our show before. Um, what do you see Nassau County as is now? Meaning that, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts? I mean, is it, is it going in the right direction? Yeah, as I a think, controller. Yeah, I think that uh, George Maragos and Ed Mangano have done right. a lot to turn the county right. around. Right. But Nassau County is in a difficult position for a lot of reasons. One, we have the national uh, recession or right. economic slowdown, right. Right. Uh, bank collapse, whatever we want to call it. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's been there. Also, the fact is that Nassau County is the first suburb of the nation, the first real suburb of the nation, mm -hmm. which means it's also the oldest. Mm -hmm. So many of the people who came here as children mm -hmm. are now senior citizens. Uh, and so it's an aging suburb mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. county has to find ways to adjust mm -hmm. to the changing mm -hmm. demographics. I think they're doing a good job. It's, mm -hmm. it's not going to be easy. When mm -hmm. you combine the two things of an aging county with people requiring more services, plus a severe economic decline, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. occurring at the same time. Right. And it's a real challenge. But I think uh, George Maragos, Ed Mangano, and the county legislature are doing what they can. It's not mm -hmm. going to be easy. Everyone's not going to agree with all the decisions that are made. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, the decisions are going to impact, are going to hurt some people. Right. But when you're going through tough times, you have to make tough decisions. Absolutely. And, you know, um, I mean, I've, uh, you know, County Executive was here also on our show, right. and I did congratulate him for some of the action that he has yeah. taken, bold action, rather. Right. You know, the which bottom line is, I'm, I'm very upbeat on the county. I mean, there are, these are tough times, yeah. uh, but I think that they have turned the corner, right. and I'm confident if we come back and do the show in five or ten years, we're going to look back and say mm -hmm. Nassau County was on a, a road to a solid recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going back years ago, in five right. or ten years now, we'll be in very good shape. Right, right. So, sir, you know, like 10 terms, 20 years in Congress, okay, so the day you walked into the Congress, first time, right. if you remember that, just I rewind see. yourself, yeah. and yeah. now, what do you see the difference? Well, first of all, when I first walked in, it was, it was like a dream come true. I mean, I never thought I'd be there with the Capitol Dome outside, being right. inside with so many famous people you had heard about and 
seeing your name up in the board as being one of those 435 members. Wow. And actually, the first thing I remember is well, I had to call my office that day to tell them I needed something, and somebody answered the phone, Congressman King's office. And that's, that's the first time I realized I was really- Proud a, feeling, right? It was, it was a good feeling, yeah. Good it was good feeling. my family was there and everything. Uh, the main difference is that mm. politics has, I'm not saying it was, everyone loved each other at that time, but it was not as partisan as it is today. Uh, there was more of a chance to work out mm -hmm. agreements between mm -hmm. the parties. Mm -hmm. Today, the lines mm -hmm. are really drawn between cable television, direct mail, being able to contact the bases of both parties, which mm -hmm. means you get the base very revved up, mm -hmm. and if one side, of, if people in either party try to make a deal, they're accused of being traitors to their party. So that's, I would say that, is that it's become more partisan and much harder mm -hmm. to work out a compromise. And people really send conflicting messages. Voters say they have to get along, right. they have to find ways to work together. Right. But on the other hand, they say everyone goes to Washington and betrays their principles. Well, you know, it's sort of uh, two competing messages there. Don't give up any principles, but find a way to compromise. It's tough to do when mm -hmm. people are combined. Any mm -hmm. compromise is uh, you know, giving up your principles. So the open communication has helped as well as hurt. It's both. Is that I mean, true? Yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's both. It's hurt, helped and hurt. But open communication is always good, so we right. have to find a way to, to keep it positive. Mm -hmm. And I, I think mm -hmm. it came on us so fast mm -hmm. that a lot of the negatives have overcome mm -hmm. the good. But in the mm -hmm. long run, mm -hmm. you can't argue with information, you can't argue mm -hmm. with the message mm -hmm. getting out. And mm -hmm. so we have to find a way to make it work. Because I don't want to go back to days when people are not aware of what's happening. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. We have to find a way somehow to mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. have the public demand mm -hmm. cooperation rather than just a uh, unyielding mm -hmm. commitment mm -hmm. to a party principle because mm -hmm. both parties have principles and they're competing mm -hmm. principles at mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. But if we can find a way to strike a balance, then mm -hmm. that is the best way to go. So do you think that, you know, if we have one party, Congress, Senate, and President, that will, will get more done than, uh, diff, you know, like Congress being Republican and yeah, you will get more done. Uh, on the other hand, it's not always good. I mean, President Obama had it uh, had it his way right. the first two years. First two years, he got a lot done. I think most of what he got done was harmful, but mm -hmm. he did get things done. I mean, he got the stimulus bill through. He got his uh, health care bill through, right. and just more spending programs generally. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. he was able to get things done, mm -hmm. but uh, not in a way that I think was was helpful. But that's that's democracy. I mean, when this is nothing, mm -hmm. there's nothing easy about democracy and. One thing is that in 2006 and 2008, mm -hmm. there were massive Democratic landslides, mm -hmm. two of the biggest really ever, mm -hmm. uh, between the Congress and the presidency. And, and then in mm -hmm. 2010, mm -hmm. there was an overwhelming Republican la uh, landslide. Right. So you had Democratic and Republican landslides competing with each other. Mm -hmm. All of those landslides sent people to Congress who absolutely believe mm -hmm. in what they campaigned on, but they campaigned on different principles. So that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we're, we're dug in right now. And Tea Party was a big victor last year, yeah, last Tea time. Party, Tea Party won, right. won very right. big, right. and they, uh, to a large extent, believe mm -hmm. that there's too much compromise in Washington. Right, right. So right. you have that, and then you have the Democrats who elected mm -hmm. in 06 and 08, who mm -hmm. were committed to mm -hmm. undoing mm -hmm. all Republican and conservative policies. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hopefully a few years now people will look back and say this is the year where we found a way to work it out. Other than that, though, it's up to the voters, and we'll see what happens mm -hmm. on election day. So do you see any end of light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, I have felt all along would take at least one more election, and I'm hoping that that one election is 2012. Okay. So because we we're not going back to Congress till after election, right. November 13th we go right. back, right? And uh, we have November 13th until mm -hmm. the end of the year mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. try to resolve so many issues that are facing us as far as mm -hmm. taxes, mm -hmm. as far as spending, mm -hmm. as far as mm -hmm. war against terrorism. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just so many issues that are out there mm -hmm. that we're going to have to resolve. <clears throat> and this will be the first test to see, once the election is behind us, right. if we can compete in a, at least a semi-statesmanlike way. Yeah. Now, you are a chairman of Homeland Security yes. you know, in Congress, and you've been there for a long time. Homeland Security Department was created after 9-11. Yes. And uh, uh, so do you, uh, what are the, uh, what, do you, what is your opinion on at the current? I mean, are we able to protect ourselves better than before? or? Yeah, we are light years ahead of where we were on September 11th. I mean, we're definitely improved. There's much more cooperation at mm -hmm. the international level, mm -hmm. the national level. 
Mm -hmm. national and local level and among local officials too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I attend meetings here uh, in Nassau mm -hmm. County with the Nassau County mm -hmm. Police mm -hmm. Department where right. you have fire departments, you have the NYPD, right. you have the MTA police, right. you have the New York City Fire Department all coming mm -hmm. out here mm -hmm. to sit mm -hmm. down with Nassau County because we realize that terrorism is not going to stop at the Suffolk County border or the Nassau right. County border or the New York City border. In fact, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. thinking among the counterterrorism experts mm -hmm. is that the next attack and we are the number one target in the world. New York City or Long Island is the right. number one target. Mm -hmm. The next attack would probably be against Manhattan, but it will be launched from the suburbs. Mm. This is much harder to police the suburbs. They're, they're mm. much more wide open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a person could be constructing a bomb, mm. or a dirty bomb mm -hmm. in their mm -hmm. garage or mm -hmm. basement, mm -hmm. and it would be harder to detect. So we have to have cooperation among all the police departments. We have radiation detectors mm -hmm. on all the main roads and highways, mm -hmm. parkways, mm -hmm. bridges, mm -hmm. tunnels, mm -hmm. working together. But it's, I find it very uh, mm -hmm. uh, encouraging mm -hmm. to sit down and see the different police departments and mm -hmm. fire departments really working together. I mean, sitting down mm -hmm. and exchanging information to uh, mm -hmm. make sure we don't see another 9-11. Having said that, we still have to be, uh, you know, the old expression, we have to be right all the time. Right. Yeah, the enemy only has to be lucky once. Right, right. And so communication is the very important aspect of all this, because communicating between these departments, I mean, that's the key, right? I mean, Yeah, it really is. I mean, before 9-11, the police department and the FBI didn't get along that well. They still mm -hmm. have some problems, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they, mm -hmm. they get along mm -hmm. much better. Mm -hmm. The FBI mm -hmm. and the CIA, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, then you had the different military intelligence agencies. Mm -hmm. Then you have Homeland Security, which tries to bring it all together, mm -hmm. and it is... Uh, Homeland Security is important to New York and Long Island, but it's even more important to other parts of the country mm -hmm. which don't have police departments uh, as large or mm -hmm. as well trained mm -hmm. as the mm -hmm. NYPD, Nassau Police, and Suffolk Police, mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. the village police departments, which mm -hmm. are really big league police departments. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's all together out there. No one of those things is going to work. We hope that all the different layers of defense right. are what's going to make it work. Yeah, so it's, it's like a lot of layers, yes. you know, one after the other, and right. everything has to go. It's like a software product, you know, yeah, you <laughs> similar to software product, you know. Right. You know. Um, we'll take a short break, and Thank we'll be right back, sir. Thank you. Welcome back. Um, we are having a conversation with Congressman Peter King. Uh, Congressman King is the chairman of Homeland Security in the Congress, and he's been, this is his 10th term, then he's running for re-election on November 6th. Uh, Congressman, let me go to the events of Middle East. Lately, you know, there are a lot of protests against the movie made somewhere here in the U.S. and. Uh, I mean, burning of U.S. flags and a lot of rage against, and obviously, you know, that can eventually affect on our land here. Sure. So, uh, what do you? What are your thoughts about how can we prevent this type of thing happening? Well, first of all, we can never let our guard down, and you're right. What happens overseas necessarily can have an impact over over right. here. We are one world. <laughs> And uh, as far as terrorism is concerned, Al Qaeda is an international force. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. can send mm -hmm. people over here. It has many affiliates that can send people here. Mm -hmm. And it has supporters here in the U.S., and some mm -hmm. of whom mm -hmm. are uh, actually affiliated with Al Qaeda. Others become self radicalized, they're mm -hmm. radicalized over the internet. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, then you have just also have malcontents who will line up with a, a terrorist organization. Right. We've had in the New York, Long Island region, 14 attempted attacks in recent years wow. against you know, the New York region. Uh, we've had some people from Long Island involved in terrorist activities. Uh, so uh, uh, we, we really, again, have to be on our guard. But again, if we do everything right, mm -hmm. we really minimize the chance of a successful attack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they try enough attacks, one of them could get through. But I did, our, our goal is to make it as difficult as possible mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm to do it in such a way that if, God forbid, they do get through, mm -hmm. we can respond to it so quickly mm -hmm. to save human life mm -hmm. and also to apprehend those who did it. So, you know, like without uh, cooperation from uh, internally here, it's very difficult for them to execute many things, right? Yes. I mean, they have to have some cooperation here. If Al-Qaeda wants to attack here, they could not carry out a 9-11 type attack. So There's just uh, an attack of that large scope Mm -hmm. involving so many people in so many different countries. Right. Uh, it couldn't, it, almost impossible for that to happen. We have to worry about the more low-key type mm -hmm. attack, an mm -hmm. under-the-radar mm -hmm. screen attack, mm -hmm. 
And to do that, Al Qaeda would need people here in this country, people to facilitate, people to provide explosives, people right. to provide transportation, people to provide cash, uh, people right. who know their way around. Right. So we have to look out for what we mm -hmm. call the homegrown terrorist and, mm -hmm. uh, right. and also the lone wolf. But more so, mm -hmm. the lone wolf is going to do something on his own. Mm -hmm. It's probably minimal damage. I mean, it's terrible if you're the one who's shot or killed, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. But as far as a large-scale attack, we have to be more concerned about Al Qaeda using local operatives to facilitate the attack. So, how can we improve the communication between with the Islamic community in Long Island and New York City? Yeah, this is a real concern to me. I actually, before September 11th, had a very close uh, relationship with the Islamic community. Mm -hmm. I visited a number of mosques. I went to the homes of the mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, Muslim mm -hmm. leaders. Mm -hmm. But I was disappointed after September 11th. Mm -hmm. We had some number. Of, uh, prominent Muslim leaders on Long Island, mm -hmm. denying that Al-Qaeda was involved in the World Trade Center mm -hmm. attacks, mm -hmm. suggesting it could have been the FBI or the CIA or the Jewish community. So I, I think we, we have to try to move ahead. We have to try to find people in that community who are willing to reach out and mm -hmm. are not going to be intimidated. Mm -hmm. uh, they also we, they have to realize that whatever their culture may have been back at home, mm -hmm. as far as cooperating with police or looking mm -hmm. upon the police maybe as being the enemy, mm -hmm. that they really have an obligation to come forward. The overwhelming majority of Muslims are outstanding people. Right, exactly. 98, 99 yes. percent. They are uh, all right. In fact, I would say virtually every Muslim I've met as an individual I have a great regard for. Mm -hmm. But there have been leaders in the community who I think have not been cooperative enough mm -hmm. who say things that are really irresponsible, like, again, a number of prominent Muslim leaders in Long Island after September 11th, mm -hmm. again, said it could have been the Jews that built the World Trade Center. Well, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And yet they're in positions of leadership. So mm -hmm. I would say it's an obligation on the part of the Muslim community to reach out, but also an obligation on the part of all the rest of us is to accept that and work with them mm -hmm. and realize that mm -hmm. Muslims per se are not the danger any more than Italians mm -hmm. per se are right. responsible for the mafia or the... Right. Irish per se are responsible for the Westies. Mm -hmm. But you do have a special obligation when the threat comes from your community mm -hmm. to be more attentive and more alert mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. look out for it. Uh, now, you know, um, Iranian president is here at the UN meeting, and uh, obviously the concern is the nuclear, you know, capability of Iran, which can be potentially dangerous to Israel and Middle East, you know, and, and, and some other parts also. How do you think, what should we do now? I mean, it's crazy. It's the, the, you know, the question is that, okay, can Israel attack themselves to Iran? Iran will retaliate and the whole war will break out. U.S. can take, you know, like uh, to attack Iraq, Iran. That also is another problem. So mm -hmm. what do you think should be done, really? Well, I agree when the president says we can't allow Iran to become a nuclear power. Right. But how he's going to stop it, the president is vague about. I mean, there are a number of things that we can do to delay Mm -hmm. You are going to details or, or what things that can be done to delay mm -hmm. the progress, but sooner or later, probably mm -hmm. sooner rather than later, mm -hmm. uh, Ar Iran is going to be able to have the bomb. I think if we have to attack, we have to attack. And the last thing I want to do is put our country into a war. But my concern mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. if we don't take out those nuclear facilities mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Iran has them, they can end up blackmailing the entire Middle East. Mm -hmm. They are a real threat to Europe and ultimately a threat to us. Right. And it makes someone like Ahmadinejad, who is a, ma a madman, right. and the mullahs around him, it right. gives them really power of life and death over a number of countries, including Israel, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> do you think we have enough intelligence that where these nuclear facilities are and all that? I'm on the intelligence committee. I really can't go into that. I can say we never have enough intelligence, right. and I'll just leave it at that. We, oh, okay. we, we have quite a bit, but we can always use more. Okay, okay. Um, now, another thing is cyber uh, attack, cyber, you know, like we, the country is run by small business, obviously. Right. There are like 95% is small business, 98%, whatever. And small businesses are very vulnerable to cyber attack because, you know, businesses don't have enough uh, firewall protection. They don't understand because they are right. busy in their own, you know, day-to-day -day activity. Trying to make a living. Right, trying to make a living. And I know that I've, I've, I've seen uh, one of the shows, you know, earlier that ch in China and all other countries, they have the whole department. All they do all day long is how to break into you know, certain things, right? The Department of Homeland Security uh, is doing anything about it? I mean, do we have a separate, uh, you know, cyber security uh, within the Department of Homeland Security? We do, but not enough is being done. But I see the main problem is with the Congress, which mm -hmm. I'm in. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think we, the government has to play more of an active role. 
Right. But many of the mm -hmm. larger companies in the private sector mm -hmm. don't want the government mm -hmm. playing a large role. They right. think it's going to add to their costs. Right. But I feel unless the government is there setting some sort of standards, even if they're voluntary mm -hmm. standards, mm -hmm. we are so vulnerable mm -hmm. to cyber attack. I mean, I don't have the numbers in front of me now, but it's countless. I mean, really high, high numbers of attacks every day by mm -hmm. China, uh, mm -hmm. also by Iran. Mm -hmm. and we can go through a list of them. And also some so-called friendly countries. Uh, you know, there's business cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's also terrorists who mm -hmm. carry out mm -hmm. cyber right. attacks. No, we do need more mm -hmm. firewalls. We do need more protection. We do need more standards. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, I think Congress was too slow to move this year. There's still a chance to get a bill done by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That bill would not be perfect, but at least mm -hmm. it's a step in the right direction. But I do, I'm one, not all Republicans agree with me, but I think we have to do more to have Homeland mm -hmm. Security playing a role, working with the private sector to stop right. these security attacks. Because also about 90% of our critical infrastructure in this country is owned by the private sector. Right. And, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if you hit a utility company, if you hit uh, really any of our large corporations, mm -hmm. banks, it can mm -hmm. uh, devastate the country, causing tremendous mm -hmm. either physical harm mm -hmm. or economic harm. I think it's more dangerous than even having a bomb one place or something like that. It really is. I mean, yeah. uh, it's, I guess, a question of picking your poison, but a bomb, especially that what terrorists could carry out, it would be limited to one area. Exactly. And as bad as it is, right. people getting killed. It's controllable. I hate to use that term about human right. uh, human death, but it is, mm -hmm. in the big picture, it's controllable. Right. Right. Cyber mm -hmm. attacks, you can mm -hmm. be shutting down hospitals, dams, mm -hmm. uh, hydroelectric plants, uh, you know, the electric grid, I mean, all of this, which would have a devastating impact. I mean, people mm -hmm. just think maybe it's like, you know, losing their lights during a snowstorm. No, it's right. a lot worse than that. We right. could have the country brought to a halt mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. tremendous mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. physical injury being caused, uh, health mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. arising. Mm -hmm. and uh, whole companies going out of business. See, the way I see it, you know, the, the importance is the knowledge because, you know, small businesses don't have the knowledge right. or know-how. And they don't have time also, in fact, you know. Right. So if government can have some kind of a, you know, a seminar or, or funded, something like that, that may work better because they don't know this, you know, people don't know. No, and that's know. why I think the government should be there setting voluntary standards. Right. Uh, maybe in some cases right. even mandatory, but primarily right. voluntary, working with the private mm -hmm. sector. And you're right, mm -hmm. different different levels of companies, there's different levels of threats, different right. types of threats. Right. Now, while some of the smaller companies may not have as much of a national security threat, right. nevertheless, they also have less ability to stop an attack. So really, mm -hmm. it's important that cyber mm -hmm. attacks on all branches mm -hmm. right. of our economy be protected against. Yep. Now, let me go to uh, November 6th, presidential election, right? Obviously, you know, right. it's a key election, yep. and there are clear differences between President and the Governor Romney. Obviously, you know, uh, I wanted to find out from you that, you know, what kind of, right, right now, it looks like it's a, you know, dead hit you know they're like right. difference of three percent or whatever which is not a you know real difference I mean uh, what is your forecast I mean do you do you see that Governor Romney will again reunite Republican because the way the comment that he came out in the TV which was probably against some Republicans they they didn't like it something like that yeah. no I think the race is extremely close uh, right I don't think President Obama has a good record he should not be reelected having said that Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The polls show him like ahead by three or four points. I think it's either more like a one-point race or an even race. The reason they say that is mm -hmm. the intensity is in the anti-Obama. Right. Uh, four years ago, everything was pro-Obama. Pro-Obama. Right. The person who wakes up on election day, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you're more likely to have a person who is anti-Obama go out and vote. Right. If they're not certain, if they're a little bit lazy, uh, or they think they may want to do something else, the anti-Obama person is going to get to the polls. Uh, because mm -hmm. the president has lost some of the base of his support. Also, I mean, in my own district, in my right. new district, which President Obama actually carried four years ago, mm -hmm. I saw in a poll he only had a 31% job approval rating. Mm -hmm. So it's up to Governor Romney. If Romney runs a good race, if he does mm -hmm. well in the mm -hmm. debates, not mm -hmm. even great, but if he does well in the debates, mm -hmm. I, think, I think Governor Romney will win the election. Good, good. I think, you know, we need to see, you know, I mean, it's, it's not easy. You know, not easy at this time. No, it isn't. And I, I, president always, you know, like obviously, you know, in 60-minute interview, he right. blames on Congress. Congress right. is not doing whatever we, whatever is good for the country and all you know, that kind of thing. A, here's <laughs> the president uh, who has hardly had any foreign foreign leaders this year. Mm. Was meeting with no foreign leaders at the UN. 
hardly ever meets with people in Congress. He will meet with the Speaker and the Majority Leader and the Minority Leader. But that's it. I mean, I, I've been in Congress for eight years of President Clinton, eight years of President Bush, right. four years of President Obama. Right. During the Clinton and Bush years, even when I was a freshman in my, in my first term, my second and third mm -hmm. term, mm -hmm. we would meet regularly with President Clinton. Mm -hmm. uh, President Bush, we were in the majority along with him then at the time. We met with him a lot more times. Mm -hmm. We never meet with President Obama. It's not just me. I hear this from Democrats. So it's not wow. even necessarily a partisan issue. Mm -hmm. The President is very much a loner when it comes to this. and. Mm -hmm. he, does not, uh, whether it's dealing with Congress or dealing with foreign, li foreign leaders, he mm -hmm. doesn't do well. Like I, I was reading a story that mm -hmm. George Bush 41, mm -hmm. uh, that whenever there was a slow time in his day, mm -hmm. he totally uh, operated to call some foreign leader, mm -hmm. just to keep that kind of contact with the leaders. Mm -hmm. You never know mm -hmm. when you're going to need them. It's good to mm -hmm. have, not, not because you're friendly with them, they're going to agree with right. you, but at least you have a working relationship and you know them. And, you, right. and if a crisis does develop, you're right. not calling them cold. Right, right. Now, you have seen the interview, obviously, 60-minute interview, yeah. right? So the, my question to you <coughs> is that, you know, what is the quality of a leader for, in your mind? I mean, you've seen both of, both of the, you know, both governor has answered and president has answered that question. Yes, I would say uh, a leader is someone who will make the tough decisions for right. his country, right. even if they are not popular at the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Good. And I, that's why I give President Bush credit for a lot of what he did after September 11th. Mm -hmm. He was criticized mm -hmm. for it. The fact is mm -hmm. we were not attacked. Mm -hmm. We have not been attacked for the last 11 years. Mm -hmm. So our viewers are all from South Asia, right? right? So what is your message to South Asia? I'm sure that you are very connected with our community. Well, we can go through different countries. Obviously, India is the world's largest democracy. Right. Uh, we have much, much closer relationship with India than we ever had before. Right. I, mean, I would say the last 10, 15 years mm -hmm. have brought U.S. and India closer together than ever before. Uh, with Bangladesh, I'm actually meeting with the Prime Minister of Bangladesh this week. Mm. Uh, it's a uh, very much a, uh, a secular Muslim country, right. uh, certainly much more than, uh, say, Pakistan would be at this time. Mm -hmm. And I think we can f try to forge democratic links there with Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Pakistan is really the, the wild card, if I use that expression, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in that they were f firm allies, but now there is an Islamist movement, certainly in their intelligence agencies. Mm -hmm. We get some cooperation, but then mm -hmm. other times we get mm -hmm. no cooperation. Mm -hmm. That is really a, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to call it a work in progress, but there's not that much longer to wait because mm -hmm. it's a very violent part of the world, right, very right. violent region. And I believe the U.S. should be getting more cooperation from Pakistan. I've only been to Pakistan once, meeting with President Musharraf back in 2007, I guess it was. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, uh, again, in a very volatile region. It's... Uh, it has India, Kashmir, it has Afghanistan, Iran, all, all within that neighborhood, which mm -hmm. is a tough neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan, my concern is they've gone too much in the Islamist uh, mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. But we have real uh, interests. We have, again, like with India in particular, we share democratic values. Right. We have stronger and stronger mm -hmm. business relationships all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as Pakistan, we've had strong mm -hmm. relationships over the years. We have to firm that up. We have to try to restore that. But it's it's uh, difficult mm -hmm. uh, so long as certain elements in the Pakistan government are not as cooperative as they should be. Bangladesh is that we can mm -hmm. uh, work on. And South Asia, this is the growing part of the world. I mean, right. this, is, right. this is in many ways the new world if we're new talking world, about right. yep. where economic progress is going to come from and mm -hmm. dramatic economic growth. I would say more so than China. I just see... I mean, China is going to continue, but they're also leveling off a bit. I mm -hmm. think the real focus for dynamic growth mm -hmm. is South Asia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, mm -hmm. is important to us to have trading partners mm -hmm. in such a dynamic part of the world. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to take you to India also. Yes, you I, know. Would, uh, I would like to go to India. It's, uh, again, the world's greatest democracy, and we have forged good relationships. I know uh, President Clinton did, but President Bush especially. Yep, well, President Bush was there. Yes, yep. very close with the Indian mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, uh, Congressman. Right, really appreciate you. your time. It's great, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, suggestions, you can email me at rajem at itv, rajem itv at gm dot, gmail dot com. I'm sorry, rajem itv at gmail dot com. Again, that's rajem itv at gmail dot com. And you can watch in our interviews on YouTube channel as well by searching for Infosys International. Thank you so much and see you again next, next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.